as we go forward in this campaign, it's going, it is going to be a fight, and we're all going to be in that fight. But I am convinced more than ever, and today with all of you here, just validates the sense that I have that we're in a transformational period where the American people have said enough. We're going to take this great democracy of ours back. We're going to prioritize the economy and the opportunity in this country for regular folk. And we're going to look ahead. We're going to look ahead. So the generations that come inherit from our efforts in 2016 a stronger country, a fairer country, and a country that respects its people. That's my I'm here today. So it is with, so it is with pleasure, pride, and the privilege to welcome and introduce to you the next president of the United States of America. Thank you, Tucson. So let me let me begin by saying that we have done rallies all over this country, and we've had great people, trade unionists, environmentalists, women's advocates, introducing us. But I have never heard people, young people give the kinds of introductions and statements that I heard tonight in Tucson. What it tells me, and, and Raul, Raul made this point, what it tells me is that when we stand together as white and black and Latino and Native American and Asian American, when we stand together there is nothing that can stop us from transforming this country. And let me just start off by thanking uh, Congressman Raul Grijalva, not only for his friendship for so many years, not only for his co chairmanship of the Progressive Caucus, but for, but for his decades of fighting for civil rights for all and Latino rights. You have here in Tucson one of the great members of the United States Congress. And let me also thank Isabel Garcia for all that she has done. Naylin Pike. Who reminds us of how much we owe to the first Americans. And that we will protect them. Let me thank that young man, Bob De La Rosa. Let me thank those two young ladies, Maria Isabel and Maria Teresa Aguino, for that wonderful rendition of the National Anthem. 
Frankly, it is hard to follow in the footsteps of these young people, beautiful young people. Make us all so proud. Now, I am often asked by the media why it is that we attract turnouts like this. Why so many people in Tucson are out tonight. Why 24,000 people were out in Boston last week. Why 28,000 people a couple of months ago were out in Portland, Oregon. And the media is asking, why is this happening? Why is it happening that we are raising money without a super PAC? We were all told, we were all told, all of the political experts said that the only way you can compete is by begging millionaires and billionaires and super PACs for money. We said no. And our campaign has received 650,000 individual contributions. And the average contribution, and this warms my heart, the average contribution is not 2,000, it's not 50,000, it is $30 a person. How's that? This is a people's campaign, not a billionaire's campaign. And when the media asks, how is all of this happening? Who is going to respond to the call for a political revolution? It turns out that the people in Tucson and people all over this country are prepared to stand up as Rao said and make sure and make sure that our government belongs to all of us and not just a handful of billionaires. The, the truth is that the American people are sick and tired of establishment politics. They are sick and tired of establishment economics. The people of this country understand that almost all of the new wealth and income being created is going to the top 1%. And the American people are saying loud and clear, we want an economy that works for workers, not just the very rich. And the American people understand that as a result of the Citizens United Supreme Court decision, you know about Citizens United that as a result of that decision, our campaign finance system, our political system, is totally corrupt, and American democracy is being undivided. And when we talk about issues facing this country beyond gun violence, beyond immigration, we are talking about the fact that in the United States today, we have more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on earth, and it is worse today in America than at any time since 1928. Let me be very clear. There is something profoundly wrong in this country when the top one-tenth of one percent 
own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. That is not what America is supposed to be about. There is something profoundly wrong when in Arizona and Vermont and all over this country, people are working two or three jobs. People are working incredible hours in order to put food on the table and yet 58% of all new income is going to the top 1%. That's wrong. There is something wrong in this country when in recent years we have seen a proliferation of millionaires and billionaires and yet we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major country on earth. That's wrong. There is something wrong when in the last two years, the 14 wealthiest people in this country, 14 people, have seen their wealth increase by $156 billion. Jesus. That is more wealth than is owned by the bottom 130 million Americans. What this campaign is about is sending a message to the billionaire class. And that message is, you cannot have it all. message to the greedy is that you as billionaires are not going to get more tax breaks when children in America go hungry. You are not going to provide huge compensation packages to the CEOs of large corporations at the same time as you're cutting the health care and the wages and the pensions of your workers ain't gonna happen. But what this economy is about is not just the grotesque level of income and wealth inequality, it is about the fact that yes, we are a lot better off economically today than we were when Bush left office. That's true. You know, my Republican friends suffer from a very peculiar disease. It's called short-term amnesia. Their view is that Barack Obama has caused every problem in the history of the world. Yet they forgot that seven years ago, 800,000 people a month were losing their jobs. But while we are better off today than we were seven years ago, there is another truth, and that is for the last 40 years, the great middle class of this country has been disappearing. What we have seen in recent years, an explosion of technology, workers being far more productive and yet, most of our people are working longer hours for lower wages. What we have seen is median family income in this country going down by $4,000 since 1999. What we have seen is male workers, the average male worker in the middle of the economy, making hundreds of dollars less than he did 40 years ago, and women making less today than they did seven years ago. And what the political revolution that we are involved is about is yes, we are going to create an economy that works for all of us and not just the people on top. Brothers and sisters, when we talk about the economy, what is always on people's minds is the issue of jobs, jobs, jobs. People understand how difficult it is to go out and get a job 
that pays a living wage. Well, it seems to me that if real unemployment is 10%, if youth unemployment is 30, 40, or 50%, the United States government must undertake a massive federal jobs program to put millions of people back to work. I want to see this country hiring teachers, not firing teachers. I want to see cities and towns hiring child care workers so that our kids get the quality child care they need. And when our infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, water systems, rail, airports, levees and dams are collapsing all over this country, I want to see millions of workers getting back to work rebuilding that infrastructure. And when we talk about the economy, we cannot help but talk about the greed and fraud and dishonesty and arrogance of those who work on Wall Street. All of you know that as a result of the greed and recklessness and illegal behavior of Wall Street, this country was driven into the worst economic downturn since the 19. 30s. Now what some of you may not know, you may not know this, but today three out of the four largest banks are much larger today than they were when we bailed them out because they were too big to fail. When we have six banks in this country issuing two-thirds of the credit cards and over 35% of all mortgages. In my view, when you have a six large banks that have assets equivalent to 60% of the GDP of this country, when you have banks that are too big to fail, in my view, they are too big to exist. We've got to break them up. to see a financial system where credit unions and community banks are out there making loans to small and medium-sized businesses, not a Wall Street which is an island unto itself only concerned about their profits.